are the founder uh, of Colbrands, a playground where brands and social influencers meet and generate a, generate a maximum of word of mouth in the process. Is that correct? Uh, you are a seasoned marketing strategist with over 20 years of experience. Wow, more than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than you, bro. <laughs> Are you older than me? Okay. She's a confirmed business developer and helps companies big and small in Switzerland and abroad to develop innovative economic models and to conquer new mar markets. Today, you are an entrepreneur who blogs about life, uh, blogs about and shares uh, your life as a startup founder online. So. I encourage you to go and see uh, all those Twitter handles. You're doing an amazing job. I've been following your growth for your company for many years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to leave the floor to you. Thank you again for being here and uh, have a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. So yes, thank you very much for having me here. Um, I'm very proud of you as well, bravo for this initiative, great initiative, I've seen it grow and um, bravo again to you. Um, I was invited to talk to you about how I started a business and transformed it from a tech startup to a influencer community. Let's dig right into it. So this is where we stand today. In, in the essence, my business consists of two vectors. One is, and it was created first, a community, a platform, an esprit, a playground, uh, which is Cool Brands. And as the name suggests, it's all about cool brands <laughs> that have the audacity at the time um, to give their products in the hands of people um, and to, to entrust them with their storytelling online. So Cool Brands is really um, the first word of mouth playground that existed in Switzerland. Um, it's a content aggregator, it's a communication accelerator. And um, a few years in the experience, um, I developed another business, which is um, a support to the first initiative, really, and which is called Life Rocks. Um, and um, it is about helping um, both sides, um, brands, companies, and also content producers um, to gain proficiency, um, to create great contents, to work on the storytelling together. And um, it's a um, consultant, consulting agency, really. It's um, content production. Um, we um, are 360 degree, it's really about marketing strategy. Um, we have now 55,000 uh, registered users, and when I say registered, it's not just their socio demo, it's also their social um, development, their social channel, their social voice, the experience we have with them over the last five years. So we know who is on Twitter, who is on Snapchat, who loves to blog, who loves to produce videos, all these things. We have a uh, history with these people and um, it's, it's really like a, t a task force to be able to activate uh, for your brand um, and uh, in the community that we created are 1,300 bloggers today, uh, bloggers, vloggers, insta bloggers, etc. Um, we also have a huge social media followership, 200,000 people over all channels. And um, the companies that embrace our services are big corporations like Nestle, L'Oreal, LVMH, Procter & Gamble, but also independent labels, events, movements, personalities, small startups. And let's have a look at the genesis first. So I was a marketing person, a business developer, and I gained experience in the international playground. When I came to Switzerland, um, it was really, really a complex market. We all know that it, it, it ain't easy to do marketing in Switzerland with the fragmentation of the market, the linguistic diversity. And um, being a German-speaking person living in the French-speaking part was what really ignited the spark because people asked me if I could help them to gain ground in... Uh, over the Rusty Graben, huh, to, to grow into the German-speaking part of Switzerland. And so I had the idea already in 2005, 2006. That was when social media emerged. And I was thinking, I'm going to create a media that helps people uh, talk in different languages, and I'm going to facilitate this. Then we saw the social media boom, obviously. 
then the explosion of mobile, and that was when I was thinking, now is the right time where we have technology and people who master it to take communications, conversations, to the point of sale. I'm buying and I'm influencing on other people's buying behavior and purchasing decisions. And that is when I was launching um, Cool Brands, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> as a blog. Because the best way to connect with bloggers is being a blogger yourself and gaining proficiency in doing what um, you are marketing as well. <laughs> That's very kind, thank you. Um, so the story began, it was a blog, we grew a community of other bloggers, other, other social media um, uh, people that were active, active in social media. And what then emerged was the realization that on both sides, we had talents emerge. People were great in taking photos, others were great in writing, others were great in producing videos. And in the marketing sphere as well, we had companies that were more open than others that already embraced social media, that already integrated digital uh, in their marketing strategy and also a community vector, and others were not. So I realized that we needed more consulting, more nurturing, more working hand in hand and together. And that is when I created LifeRocks um, in 2014, which is specialized in helping both sides um, approaching and co-creating, co-working on the digital storytelling. And then in 2015, everything was about content producers. And in 2016, the term influencer really emerged. Um, in 2017 now, we see pop, uh, initiatives pop up all the time. Influencer marketplaces, uh, smaller initiatives, platforms, playgrounds, all sorts. And um, where I can see this going, I think, I don't think that technology really is a solution um, to this um, human um, interaction. Certain things may be able to be automized, but I think what we will see is micro agencies emerge, small groups of bloggers and influencers um, pulling their competencies and their tools and their resources and representing other people who work in exactly the same uh, segment. <laughs> so, word of mouth really is, um, it's, it's a PR okay, but um, it's a marketing strategy where ultimately at the funnel and enthusiasm and the buzz that you create, there is a conversion, a commercial act. And I think the idea of being strategic about this, we were quite, yeah, it, it was a little bit avant-gardist at the time. Um, but word of mouth strategies really aren't anything new. I mean, we all know that recommendations from a trusted source uh, will beat advertising of any kind, any time. Um, and so working with people who are influential on others is really what we do. The aim is to have brand conversations um, that are going on anyway, because a lot of it, of it is going on every day, about 80 to 90 percent. What we see online is just this really, really small percentage. And um, the strategic word of mouth strategies is to help resurface um, these conversations and project them into the digital space. Influencer marketing, to put it in just one phrase, really is the digitalization of word of mouth. When I started with Cool Brands, it, it was really, it, 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 it responded to a need because there was nothing of the kind in Switzerland. There was no media that communicated in all the languages. There was no brand aggregator of any kind. Um, there was no dialogue platform. So when we started, it really grew very, very fast. How do we um, create online word of mouth is um, we create remarkable product experiences and this is when you're strategic about um, um, product launches for example or word of mouth marketing this really is the key it's giving the product in the hand of your of your people of the user and cutting out the intermediary that is the media and recognizing the customer who is using it as a media. So influencer marketing is really looking at um, who are the, the people um, who have created an audience and proficiency in producing content to publish it and spread the word to their own followership. The more a product experience is um, 
Let's just step one back. <laughs> oh. yeah. The more a product experience is wow, the more warm is going to be generated. And um, it's the same as uh, Laura did. Your, your product and the experience that you will create around it is really a gift. <laughs> and you should see it as such. And give it to those who want, you know, offer it to those who want as well. Um, the game we play is um, the recommendation of a friend will impact um, in the digital space on the zero moment of truth, meaning somebody with no prior product experience will look for information and find a friend's recommendation or a trusted blogger's recommendation online. And it's not just about Google anymore. It's very much real life. It's today. It's Snapchat. It's here and now. And um, <laughs> so this is the moment that we, that we play in to be strategic, to have people talk about products here and now to their followership and create this um, um, referral, really. Here's a case that I brought along. Uh, which is one of the most complex cases that we've realized because it was, it was a huge launch um, in Switzerland involving lots of people, lots of uh, uh, on and offline marketing techniques, a lot of trade marketing techniques touching, touching um, um, on trade and off trade, very integrated campaign. And um, it was um, Summersby, which is a apple flavored beer, let's say a cider type drink. It's a Carlsberg product. And um, it existed somewhere else already in Europe, but not in Switzerland. And the Swiss are very proud of their apples, obviously, so it's a little bit difficult to get in there with, with the product of this kind. Um, to understand expectations and behaviors and what people uh, really, wh when, they would con when they would enjoy a drink like this, for example, or would they mix with people, all these things needed to be felt. First. It's not a science, it's, it's a feeling to see how the consumer reacts, how he uh, engages. Um, so we started off with a fun lab. It's a co-creation space into which we pulled 500 uh, digital influencers to work with them on a launch strategy. Communication, approach, um, context, at the time, nobody knew what the product was. It was uh, unrevealed, uh, so intrigue was generated. <laughs> and we played on social status because we really communicated that if you're in this campaign and if you've been invited to participate, you are important to us. Your voice is extremely important. You represent other consumers. Please come in and be part of it. And uh, people were excited. At the first stage already, without even knowing what the product is, we as marketing people had a huge outcome. Um, we could streamline um, our strategic um, plan. We could adapt the communication materials. For example, um, we planned a PR conference and invite lots of uh, journalists, etc. But we could drop this because we realized this is not what the consumer wanted. Consumer wanted the product to come to him at home and share the experience with their friends in an intimate setting. So budget was optimized, and this clearly represents um, yeah, money value. And then in the second phase, we um, opened up. We um, revealed the product. It was an alcoholic beverage, uh, obviously. Um, people who were in the fun lab got to invite their friends, five of them, into the campaign, share the experience with them before the product even was available in the market. So it was really like you were the first to try this. Come and share it with your friends. Um, they could invite uh, other people. This, the community around this product grew. Um, we um, adopted the experience. 2,500 Swiss online content producers were working with us on this campaign. They got uh, 24 bottles for free um, at home or at events they could take them. And their mission was to have fun, <laughs> simply, to um, enjoy the drink, test it, um, provide feedback online, share their experience. And um, we provided them with digital tools, uh, aside from the um, experience um, in real life. They got branding materials, badges to identify, uh, conversation triggers with their friends, play cards, and recipes that we uh, created especially for the occasion and to be enjoyed with the drink. Oh. Ah, 
Yeah. And um, although it seems fun what is projected into the digital space, there is a, a, a very much a business reason behind this. Uh, this kind of approach really makes business sense. Why? Because no other initiative has the power to touch as many people in as fast a time with an authentic message, um, consumer to consumer recommendations as a strategy like this. It, only eight weeks into the campaign, starting from the fun lab to then the rollout, over 100 Swiss consumers were touched by friends who participated in this experience and who had a real life experience with the product. So it's not somebody who's seen a poster or something, somebody who's tasted it, somebody who's been engaged with the product. Um, over 200,000 brand, um, in, uh, brand related interactions were generated, 33,000 um, in, concern, in, in um, relation with the tasting of the drink. And the first community of the Summersby brand on Facebook was constituted of users from our community that we migrated into their Facebook page and that had real product experience and who were really enthusiastic fans, obviously. They really did pre prescribe uh, the product and invited their friends to pour in. There were also uh, consumer insight service, classic marketing uh, techniques, obviously, but the real plus <laughs> for me as a marketer is the contents that were created. User-generated content, story online, pictures, videos, snaps, all these little things of people having fun, enjoying the drinks, sitting by the lake, being at home, trying recipes, uh, clinking glasses with friends. And, and um, it, it, it helped Summersby to nourish their, their social ch uh, channels for like six, six months, if not one year. Um, before the product even came to the market to retail, what this, all of this uh, enthusiasm generated was a pull-in effect. Consumers were going to bars and were saying, well, you don't have summer speed, what's that? <laughs> because everybody has heard about this drink and people were actually asking for it. So Entree decided to anticipate the, um, the, the launch in restaurants and bars for two weeks and that is money, <laughs> because you start selling earlier, I mean, the, the numbers are phenomenal. And I mean, I can tell you a lot, but Carlsberg mandated a, um, an independent marketing institute, obviously, as well, to follow the, the campaign to measure the success, and they too confirmed the results um, that I'm telling you here, it's not something that I just invented, um, and confirmed that before the product hit the shelf in the Swiss uh, market, 6% added awareness were already created by people with real product experience. So, influencer marketing is helping your branding and your social branding in particular. We've heard the notion before, it is about getting the product, the right product to the right person at the right time, in the right way, or everything is impacting the, percep the perception of the product, and if it's a new product that didn't exist before, uh, also how it's, how it's experienced. The more engaging the experience, you receive it at home. How? You unpack it. How? <laughs> Is it tactile? Does it make a, so a sound? Is it, does it have a taste? Um, does it have a smell in particular? Strategic marketing, influencer marketing, and word of mouth marketing con concentrates on these aspects how to make it stickable, memorable, buzzworthy, shareworthy. And um, the result of these strategies is output from the consumer, from the user. Earned media, honest, authentic recommendations, quality stories, fabulous outputs that the user uh, projects in his digital space. Now, anybody can think that <laughs> getting people excited with booze is easy, but <laughs> it really works with any product. From uh, Honestly, I think from the toilet paper to the baby typer to the luxury product, there, there is no boring products, there are only boring stories. People can, if you meet the right person who is getting excited about technology, for example, or some aspect, people will talk if the match fits. Huh? So here's just another example of what we can, you know, what we realized for L'Oreal, for example, it's a beauty product, and just 15 beauty influencers in Switzerland were invited to 
come to the salon, meet the hair stylist, um, follow the experience before and after pics, videos, live chat, live PR. And what you can see is um, happy people meeting in the same uh, space, creating real human relations, and then benefiting from the visibility that one person has been creating for themselves uh, to be able to project the message and amplify the message and the experience to their audiences. Um, here again, uh, over a million people were touched, lots and lots and lots of uh, contents generated. Where we step in is we amplify, we accelerate, and we viralize the contents that our users um, produce. Um, here again, another example with food, um, the matchmaking between um, an espresso gourmet experiences um, and um, influencers online, where people went to restaurants, they got to get really, really hands-on with gourmet chefs in the kitchen, prepared the food with them, um, got to learn how to do certain things, techniques. And um, people are still talking about this because this has just been so particular, you know, to be able to meet uh, a star chef and uh, to cook with them, to get some back backstage uh, insight into his activity. And if I can summarize all of this, the, the key takeaway is uh, fashion, food, technology, events, personalities, everybody can benefit from... Um, influencer marketing, community building, and the word of mouth that they generate. Um, and it can be uh, integrated, it's not, just a launch com it's not just a launch technique, it can be integrated in any stage of the product life cycle um, to give a boost, to communicate a change, an evolution, for example. Um, word of mouth is not something that you do, it's something that you earn, and the more awesome you are, <laughs> and the more word of mouth you will get. Um, it's also about recognizing those that help you spread the word, nurturing their talent, giving them um, reason to mix and mingle, combine um, talents, um, and really integrate them uh, in, in your strategy, make this human connection. And it's about rewarding as well. I mean, if somebody works so hard for you, <laughs> recognizing is something. The product is not a reward. The product is a tool for them to communicate and um, being strategic about um, influencers and um, uh, content marketing uh, and all these things is also to think about how I'm going to have them share my commercial success. Um, my key message to you is, I've built a business that is 100% based on community and uh, harnessing its power, and it makes perfect business sense. For five years, we are doing exactly the same thing that we started off. We have an evolution with our users, we have seen them grow, we have beauty bloggers who were single at the time, who are now mums, and we uh, follow them uh, on their journey, and uh, we can see their talents grow. So really, this connection with the people in your community is very, very important. It's not just a Facebook like or a follower on Twitter. It's really important to see them in real life. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Hello, she's, she's so generous. I mean, we, I was mentioning about generosity. You are so generous with your time, with your community. And uh, I don't know, do you sleep? Um, <laughs> yes and no. I, I don't sleep when other people sleep, let's say. <laughs> uh, so we have time for questions. And then uh, we bring again uh, Laura here for a few questions as well. So who, is like, who would like to start? Oh, we have one there. Yes. Thank you. Thank Uh, hi, my name is Kathleen Homeland, and I'm an independent digital media consultant. Um, now, I understand what you're doing, obviously, for consumer brands, and I just um, sort of had a question more regarding to social brands uh, like B Corp companies 
or even in nonprofits and humanitarian areas, what your platform does for them and whether you can give some examples? Yes. I mean, it's, uh, it's easy to demonstrate, you know, what you can do with the product. Yeah. But um, working with influencers, content producers and community um, works on all levels. So small businesses, startups, um, movements, um, B Corp operations, etc. Um, it, it really is a strategy. You know, where, where can you integrate uh, content producers, where do you find your community? Does it already exist? Do you just have to bring them together? Who are the people who are influential and in what, in, in what aspect? And maybe the people you have who are influential in your domain are not those that have an audience or the talent or the proficiency to uh, 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 project uh, digital storytelling um, and really excite people. So you can maybe match them. You can match them with an excellent content producer who has also uh, gained um, internet fame, let's say, to tell the story of someone, to accompany the launch, for example, of a company or explain a product, etc. This not always have the <laughs> doesn't have to be the one who is doing it who's also telling the story. There's even sometimes more value in having somebody else who is not in your domain tell to an audience who would have not normally come to you about what you do. It's even more strong, stronger. Thank you. Just before going to the next question, we are trending in Switzerland, number one topic. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Hi, my name is Hi. Magda. I'm representing a women's non-for-profit organization. Uh, first of all, thank you so much. A really great presentation. Thank you. I've got four questions. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I will stick to one then. I'm, I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing <laughs> your finger in the air. Okay. Um, you've got your, your feedback, your content comes from consumers, the users. How do you manage uh, the content, the good one versus the less good, and so as well, how do you differentiate between subjective and objective um, feedback? There, there are different layers, let's say. Um, not every influencer is a blogger, not every blogger is an influencer, not every social media content producer is a blogger, and not every one of them is proficient and uh, present on any channel. So let's say there, there's different strategies as well. Sometimes it's letting go entirely, and sometimes it's giving a mission. So even about the output, I mean, we are always sure who is implied in a strategy. So we know the people, and we know their talent, and we know their preference, and we know the performance. Nothing in this strategy is left um, to hazard. If we want to have a certain quality output in a certain channel, Snapchat, for example, then we will look for users in our community who are proficient in this channel, influential in this channel, um, and to whom it's second nature, say. Um, and so we can be sure of the quality, because we know what to expect, in a way. Does that answer your question? <laughs> you're, open to a, you're open to a wider community of yeah. users, so influencer would be initial stage. Then you go beyond that. Exactly. And how do you maintain the... the, the <laughs> the quality of the output, it's not me who's maintaining the quality of the output. It's forcing companies in the mindset to produce products that are wanted. Mm -hmm. Because if you think of the community who's using it and you, don't put, and you don't put a product out there that is fun, fabulous, remarkable, that really serves the need, then no, you cannot be sure that the output that people will generate is positive. The responsibility is you. Yeah, preach. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I have a question. Oh, oh, where's Clarissa? Clarissa? We have one question and then Clarissa's next. Yeah. I'll come down. And then after Laura. No, go ahead. Thank you. I'll take it. Hi, Maya Plint. Um, I am a founder of a startup, uh, an incubator too for startups. 
Uh, but my question is, how do you work with bloggers? Because I know they have a fee structure. How do you decide which bloggers are the ones and how do you pay them out? Because they don't work for free, right? So how do you balance the upcoming content producers that might do something in exchange for product with the ones that are paid? Because we know that the, the ones that have great traction will charge also quite a lot more. Hmm. You know, it's with everything in life. Um, if what you do is something that somebody else wants or wants to be part of it, like take this organization, for example. It's a startup in its own sense. Somebody passionate, created, made a first step and found not friends, but people who share the same mindset. If as a startup, you find people who want to be part of what you create, it, it's the startup sense really you know we are a lot of people working towards something to create something amazing and everybody shares the little revenue we generate with it first you know but it's being part of something bigger i don't think that it's necessary to think at this stage really how am i going to pay bloggers no how am i going to 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 entice people to to pull into my project and if they are if they're passionate as you are then they will help you naturally. It's not about remuneration, it's about recognition and being part of it. Then, if you give them a mission, we want to produce a video, we want, we want to create 10 texts, uh, and it's different, do they produce on their own blog, which is a value that you give them to, or do they produce for you, which is also uh, a pers pers perspective to take. So if you say, I need 10 Instagram pics for my own, channel, whatever, then it's a mandate you give them and um, bloggers do have fees and you negotiate and that is it. We have one last question from Sarah. <laughs> Do you need a headset? Where is the headset? Hi Eileen. Hi. Thank you so much for your talk. Very inspiring. Um, I've been in advertising and content creation for a long time. And we all know that advertising these days, uh, nobody buys it anymore. I mean, you know, we're, Im we're immune to uh, paid or sponsored uh, ads. And that's why the inf you know, influencers are so important. And uh, that's how we actually project the lifestyle they have into our lives. Um, and I'm thinking uh, that that's going to become saturated very soon because we are going to be immune to those messages as well. And there's so many, everybody's an influencer now. So in your opinion, what is the next thing? How, is the, how will be the next way of actually pushing a product, getting attention from users and uh, prospects? Yeah. In my opinion, it's going niche. You know, like uh, in the first slide I projected, I said, where is it going to go? Um, it's, um, it's, it's getting to go smaller, but with a higher impact in the target audience. Hmm? Um, not micro-influencing, but um, in terms of uh, strategies or deployment of uh, strategies, communication, communication strategies. I think companies are going to bank more on working with individuals and accompanying them on their way, or small groups. For example, um, you are the hotel school in Lausanne. You have all interests of creating your own content production and publishing cell of food bloggers, uh, alumni who grow into food bloggers, because a blogger is not a natural uh, phenomena. It's something that you can help facilitate. And you let these people continue their story, but you have regular touch points, so it's like an agency, or travel bloggers, or beauty bloggers, or you know, all sorts of things. I think this is where it's going to go. So we don't have one strategy to serve all, or a, a product that's going to be projected into the mass market, and the mass to be all excited about it, and a few bloggers to prescribe it, to work really closely with people in one domain is, I think, a lot more rewarding for, every, for, for either side. Thank you so much, Eileen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.